Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pocket Coach. Uh, I have a little side topic for today. Let me get my five-minute timer started. All right, and here we go. So today's topic is about what motivates people. Now, uh, Daniel Pink did a, a pretty great book on this, and so uh, why am I doing a recording? I hope you'll stick around and see why I thought it was still necessary, despite his really you know, uh, prolific book. So uh, first off, when we talk about motivating people, you know, getting people to do stuff it, at work, uh, in life, um, and you can separate motivation into two piles, extrinsic motivation, which comes from the outside world, and intrinsic motivation, which comes from the inside world. So the outside world is pretty obvious, rewarding people, monetarily, whatever, praising people, at a boy, at a girl, right? Your external reputation, improvement of power, right? All these things are external motivations. Intrinsic is just deep inside of us. It compels us to just want to do more. The fact that we'll play uh, Angry Birds for hours and hours <laughs> or some other repetitive video game. No one's paying you to do that. It's taking time that you could be spending on other stuff. And yet you're just very motivated to keep doing that. So what what motivates people intrinsically? Desire, right? Um, fun. Yeah, fun is its own reward, right? Ethics sometimes will compel us to do stuff. But that also could be gray. For example, ethics, it could be that... You care about your reputation, and so you pretend to have ethics instead of actually having them. So then that becomes more extrinsic than intrinsic, right? Um, but in the end, the question is, how do we tap into people's internal motivation? And that was the subject of uh, Daniel Pink's book, Drive, okay? So Drive, there's a great YouTube video on it. I highly recommend watching it. It's RSA, search for RSA Animate Drive. The surprising truth about what motivates us. It's got 19 million views. So uh, we Agile coaches use this a lot, especially in safe classes. We used to play this a lot. Um, in the end, though, he basically asserts that there are three intrinsic motivators we can tap into. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Autonomy is, you know, being able to do things the way you want to do them, being a, being empowered to, to find your own path, your opinion matters, that kind of stuff. Mastery is getting great at something. Um, so like Angry Birds, <laughs> right? Or playing the guitar is a pretty common uh, example. Um, you may never go and play in public, but you just still practice all the time because you just want to get better at it. Maybe play with some friends. That's about it. Uh, and purpose. Uh, purpose is a huge one. Uh, if you give people a sense of purpose, they will do a lot. And sometimes they'll do terrible things, atrocities. Sometimes they'll do amazing things. Um, but in the end, purpose is a massive motivator. People struggle with a lack of purpose a lot. And depression often comes from a lack of purpose. So these are the three. They're all very powerful, except maybe there's one of the three I'm not that into. And so I'll talk about that. Meanwhile, one day, someone sent me this book, Gamification for Dummies. And I was like, oh, okay, I love gamification. I, I have you know, my iPhone app and my Android app to gamify skill growth. So I love gamifying. If anyone wants help gamification-wise, big fan, call me up. Um, but in the meantime, uh, they also had three intrinsic motivators. And I was like, oh, the three motivators, this will be Daniel Pink stuff. And it wasn't. It was at their own list. And I'm like, oh, their three are mastery, overcoming obstacles and creating order from chaos. Now, what's weird about creating order from chaos is I'm like, what does that even mean? Mastery is the same as the other one. Overcoming obstacles, right? Okay, I get it. But creating order from chaos, I was like, what, what could that mean? And I finally got it. You know, people who like to fold laundry or tidy, you know, people like to tidy, uh, load the dishwasher, unload the dishwasher. The, those chores that uh, some people hate, other people just love. They love to organize. They love to create order from chaos. And once I understood what they meant, I'm like, oh my gosh, out of all six of these bullets, two being the same, um, creating order from chaos is absolutely my number one motivator. <laughs> my entire world is about creating order. From I make lists like no other person that's ever lived. So it was really fun for me that I didn't recognize it. And then I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> All right. So um, we have here the two models. And you can see right away that mastery is the same. So really, that would make five intrinsic motivators. Uh, but then as I started sharing this with my colleagues, people asked me, Anthony, do you think mastery and overcoming obstacles might be the same motivator? So I thought about that before I answered, and here's my answer now. Um, I don't think they're the same. I think mastery is a long-term motivator, whereas overcoming obstacles is a short-term motivator. 
right? When you're a, 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 you know striving for mastery, you might find multiple obstacles, each of which must be overcome. But oftentimes you'll run into obstacles that have nothing to do with mastery. It's just a current obstacle in a certain space. And when someone says, Anthony, that's not possible. You'll never be able to do that. Immediately, I want to prove them wrong. <laughs> right? I want to overcome that obstacle and say, ha ha, you can do that. But I have no interest in pursuing that issue, that area further into the level of mastery. So I do think that those are separate. All right, my time box is about to run out. So I'm going to reset the timer. It looks like we're going to go a second five. And uh, no video goes over 15. I don't think we're almost done with this one. Um, okay, so the last thing is I said that there's one of, uh, of uh, Pink's three motivators that I don't really love, and it is autonomy. So here's the deal. If someone is not already motivated, autonomy can motivate them to do nothing. In other words, if you gave me autonomy, I could use that autonomy to go lay on the couch and watch some TV, right? So when you give people autonomy and they don't already have some sort of drive, some sort of motivator, then I actually think it's going to work against you. I think that better would be to, well, I think critical is that they already have drive, they already have motivation, and then autonomy can be a great accelerator. Once they have drive, once they have passion, once they are motivated, autonomy is, is a very powerful accelerator, but I don't think in and of itself. And then in some companies, they were like, hey, like at Motorola, the top level was a distinguished engineer. If you get to the level of distinguished engineer in the technical path, um, you no longer had like any anybody telling you what to do. You could do whatever you thought was right to help uh, Motorola. I think it was Motorola um, to, uh, to, to advance. So they were distinguished engineers. Well, that was the ultimate in autonomy. But promising someone that level of autonomy and then getting them to you know be like, oh, I want that. That's an extrinsic motivator now. The promise of autonomy is extrinsic. So again, I think autonomy is just not a motivator for me. I think um, it, it fits better as an enabler, as an accelerator once you have motivation. So if that's the case, then that gives me four intrinsic motivators. That's still you know, four, and it was three from each of these systems. But uh, here's what we got. We got purpose, mastery, overcoming obstacles, and creating order from chaos. For me, I think these are all undeniably motivators, intrinsic ones. And then I put down here accelerator autonomy, right? So once you have one of those four in play, then autonomy is very powerful. So what do we do with this? Okay, well, now that we have our motivators, how does this matter? Um, you know, mo these videos are for my business channel. So clearly this needs to have a business impact. So there's this other great book, Turn the Ship Around, uh, and another great video. And this is my absolute favorite video, period, for mindset in Agile. Uh, you can search for MindSpring Presents Greatness by David Marquette. 2.4 million views, okay? Um, in it, one of the many great lessons in here, one of them is to um, lead with, to use intent-based leadership, where you clearly state your purpose, and then let people figure out how to get there, right? It's beautiful. And it's something that my clients don't do very well. I find them very often telling people what to do, not giving them an, an intent and saying, you tell me how to get there, right? It's just not enough of that yet. So what do we, so if we take greatness, and we take this turn the ship around ideas and we apply it to our four intrinsic motivators, we can add one other piece to the puzzle. And that piece is just because we are looking to tap into intrinsic motivators, extrinsic are still a thing. And so when you can combine them, you can get really powerful results. So let's think about that. Let's look at the five, right? So, or the four plus the, uh, the autonomy. So for purpose, um, ha do you have a purpose statement? Do you have a purpose in your work, in your world? Do, are, are you excited by that purpose? Look at this first purpose statement, double the throughput in half the time. That's one of my actual clients had that as their purpose statement. Is that motivating? Or doing what pa doing now what patients need next. Which of those two do you think will probably be more motivating to the average person, right? So um, I think the second one is way more motivating. The first one is still better than nothing, right? It's better than not having a purpose statement. But I think that one is just probably not going to tap into people's hearts the same way. Um, so are you as a leader or are your leaders leading with purpose? Or are they just managing, managing micromanaging, you know, there's a big difference between managing and leading. Mastery. Um, you need to share where you're weak, where your organization is weak. Um, only when you share where your organization is weak can people then say, oh, well, I could master that. 
And so you can tap into that desire for mastery by showing where you're weak. And then, by the way, you can still recognize them with an extrinsic reward. Um, overcoming obstacles, same. What are your company's blockers, right? SWOT charts are great for both of these two. Um, what are your organizational blockers? Okay, share them. And then let people who are like me, I love overcoming an obstacle, go for it, right? Don't tell people who has to do what. Tell them what the obstacles are. The next one is creating order from chaos, my personal favorite. Um, where are you most disorganized? Where organization would be a game changer? Share that. And people like me are going to be like, oh, I love our tidying. I can take a look at that. All right, last 15. Last five, start. Okay. Uh, this is, I think, the last slide. Um, so share where you are potentially disorganized. And then um, recognize people who find ways to tidy for faster access and reuse. And this is my aha moment. When you create order from chaos, you increase the ability for uh, faster access and more reuse. When I fold my laundry, I can reuse my clothes. When I put away the dishes, I can reuse the dishes, right? So this is true in the business world as well. People like myself who love to create order from chaos, give us a chaotic area, watch what we do with it. In the end, it'll be faster access and better reuse. Finally, the autonomy one, which I think is more accelerator than, uh, than motivator, um, don't make people have to get permission from their manager to help with one of these things. It's what they're drawn to. Let them be drawn, take advantage, be glad. You know, their regular work won't suffer. It probably will be just fine because they're intrinsically motivated to do a little extra right now. Furthermore, people who look at the big picture often do better at the small picture anyway. So requiring permission from a manager is the opposite of autonomy, which would be possibly demotivating. Eh, I don't even want to bother with that. I just, I just won't help. Um, and then uh, don't force a way of work on them. Don't force a solution approach um, or micromanage their progress. If they fail, they should still be rewarded because um, they're at least trying, right? And that's it's like the participation trophy, but in the business world. So there you go. Um, that's what you can do with these. I'm sure your creative imaginations will come up with things as well. But there you have it. I've combined Daniel Pink's work with the Gamification for Dummies work, and I've created my own personal list of four plus one motivators. And I hope that you uh, can find them useful. My name is Anthony Crane with Pocket Coach, and I'll see you on the next video.